the premise of the conversation, and then KG kind of reminded me that we have like over 20 years of content and regions to go over. So we weren't going to be able to fit everything into one particular part. But the premise is essentially going over the positives and negatives of each region. But it's leading into something. So the original idea, I don't mind telling you guys, because most of you either A, won't uh, remember and consider how long it's going to take us to get through everything, or B, uh, didn't watch this particular section, uh, is to kind of talk about what issues a region has. Considering the negative reception of journeys, what things would it take for you to be like, you know what, fuck this series? Like, Tyrone used the example of Dragon Ball earlier about, like, how he's had very little interest in, like, going into the manga for Super and everything because of the events that have gone on in the anime from what he watched and in the movies. What would it take from Journeys or just any future Pokemon series to be like, fuck it? And I'm not talking about some ridiculous shit like Ash's new name is Bob and he's now a a 26 year old transsexual still playing the like it has to be something realistic in writing they would choose to do with his character and like various other things like animation fights battles that kind of stuff so we're going to start from os and work our way back up to journeys analyzing the regions and kind of going over their pros and cons and we're going to try to keep it to like writing based things so not in, like for example when we get to DP, I don't I don't think we're gonna try to over rely on filler as the only writing problem in fucking DP because filler, although is a problem in DP, it's an easy thing to point out and go, yeah, that's the problem with this with DP. Because that's implying if you took the filler out, the DP would be perfect. I don't think any of us give any region in this series a 10 out of 10. I'm trying to get to what 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 is the thing that stops it from being 10 out of 10. And I know Tyrone's brought this up before about how by Pokemon standards is how we rate it. But by like normal writing standards, a lot of this would be ass. I kind of want to get to the normal writing standards and why these series have the problems they do. But we're obviously going to still talk about the good points too. So tonight's focus will be, I believe we're doing OS through Johto. Yeah, so the uh, so basically the, the Kanto series, Orange Islands and Johto. Alrighty then, so what do you guys say? Shall we get into it? Let's get it. Okay, so obviously now that we got the intro and stuff out of the way, let us begin in talking about the overall narratives of each saga. The thing is though with OS is that OS is a bunch of generations, uh, including a fan-made one in a way <laughs> through the Orange Islands, which is going to yeah. be something we'll have to be discussing too. So we're going to divide it up into three portions, I guess. So we're going to begin first off with the series of Kanto, which I think is like 52 episodes, if I'm correct, or something like that, before we so. then move on into the uh, the Orange Islands. So uh, Terrell, since you were the one who initiated this conversation, we shall pass this question on to you and ask you the following thing. Uh, what do you view as the pros of OS and what it has established? 57 kg, not 52. Okay, uh, 57 episodes. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, so the question still remains, though. What do you see in OS as a positive in regards to its storytelling from the anime series? I think <laughs> OS is probably the most unhinged gen uh, generation because it doesn't have a standard. It was... Ironically enough, working on creating its standard for how it would make episodes and how they would follow. And it's very chaotic nature. It's weird because I view it as a pro and a con, but for the sake of it being a pro, I'll talk about it as a pro. It kept OS from never being too boring. OS, it's weird because OS in the, is a way it's formulaic, but OS's best writing strength is the fact that it's very chaotic and kind of says... We're going to do the weirdest shit we can possibly do. In one episode, we'll have Ash cross-dressed to get into a gym battle. Another episode, he'll he'll just be dead. Another episode, we'll have an episode that just focuses on the Pokemon getting back. And even by today's standards, that episode is still insanely unique. Because it's the only episode that I believe gives subtitles for the Pokemon. Mm. And it's a blueprint that I think every other region uses at some point. Like... Mm. OS is the blueprint, so I think the, the its chaotic nature led to it creating a standard that every region would use moving forward. I think the best thing it has going forward is its writing dynamic between Brock, Ash, and Misty. 
And we're not talking about specifically development, but more so their like character flow and how they bounce off of each other and respond to each other. Having characters like Ash and Misty who are around the same age, but Misty's a little bit more mature, but not mature enough to where she isn't still a petty piece of shit. And it works because it allows her to play into Ash and them going back and forth. Whereas Brock is considered to be like the respectful middleman who, although is around their age, is old enough to recognize when things are going a little bit off the hinge and giving Brock his own little immature side and his obsession with women is very, it, it keeps, it keeps their dynamic balance. Nobody's ever too serious, too much. And it creates for fun and interesting dialogue. Um, it also is probably the most loose when it comes to game mechanics in terms of correlating them. That's why I think that like a lot of Ash's gym battles in region in, in OS is meant to be focused in terms of they're meant to be more entertaining than like like stimulating mm -hmm. because that's why most of them are either like gags or have some sort of comedic element to them with a few exceptions being like I think uh, Lieutenant Surges and maybe like even Team Rockets, like because it, it still wanted to tell a story, it still wanted to, to tell Ash's come up and still have him rise. But it it does it in a way that you're you're never bored. I guess is the best way to describe it. Um, and I, I don't know something about the old '90s art style just appeals to me, but that's more of an animation aesthetic. So I'll, I'll kind of I'll leave it at that because you guys also have your own reasons, and I don't want to do that thing where we come up with all the reasons three times. Not yeah. story. Ryan Sora, chill out. I already see you in the chat. You can be a fucking problem. Yeah. But go, yeah. Uh, uh, Tyrone, you can go next. Um, To not like repeat a lot of the points that Terrell said the interaction is good, but I want to say uh, just for OG, and I know this is going to be technically not really Japan's thing. I mean, Japan did its part too, but I didn't live in Japan at the time or I never grew up in Japan. I don't know their half. But I can say here in America, as a American watcher of the show and being introduced to it, uh, the marketing. This was during the 90s where you could basically, you could tell companies to sell a brick and they'll sell the fuck out of that brick. Like, the 90s really took Pokemon and ran with it. They freaking ran with it. I'm not even talking about the episodes at this point. I'm talking about like the the marketing and how they advertise pokemon this wasn't just something that just had like nowadays when a new anime shows up on like crunchyroll or something they do like one little trailer and that's about all you really get pokemon like goddamn, when it hit it hit i'm talking pikachu's jukeboxes for originally made songs that were made by actual musicians and artists i'm talking uh i'm talking uh toys on top of toys I'm talking uh, selling Pokemon cards only for tops to make new Pokemon cards and sell those for advertisement purposes. I'm talking about um, selling a Pikachu uh, Nintendo 64 and then having like this cheesy commercial where his dog is like, ah, I've been neglected ever since Bobby picked up a Pikachu, shit like that. Where they were extremely corny, but at the same time, you couldn't get mad at it. When Pokemon the first movie dropped, I swear, I can't even tell you how many commercials blew up on different stations just telling you to watch the movie. Fucking Burger King tell, uh, selling four toys. Four. They sold four. This is one of the few times where they sold four toys. They sold the Pokeball, the golden card that's inside the Pokeball, the plastic Pokeball, and then the toy that's inside the goddamn plastic Pokeball. That's four toys. And also with the tops cards that came with the toys. That's five toys in a kid's meal. Holy fucking shit. Now, the, the Pokeball with the golden card in it, that was a limited edition. You got to order it thing. But still, like, God, the marketing made sure if you didn't like Pokemon, you at least fucking respected it. Um, The cheesy commercials, like, I know the one with the, <laughs> the they're singing like Jingle Bells, but the characters are singing it and like Lapras freezes Ash and Gary's like laughing at him and shit or when Ash throws a Pokeball but they edit it out so it's like a snowball instead and it hits the screen as like Pokemon Christmas Marathon and then it shows like all the winter based episodes that happened 
they really wanted to push this home that you this is what you want to watch and honestly i was here for all of it so i would say i would chalk it up to that and just the comedy of it and i didn't know if you guys wanted me to get too far into the comedy of pokemon or did you want to save that for one of you guys to talk about i think for you being the comedy meister you probably should be the mm. one to talk about it the most well, Terrell actually talked about this earlier. Uh, the dub was responsible for a huge chunk of that comedy. But the dub really works with what it was given. So I will say that the in Japanese, they obviously had to animate Ash and the others doing these things. So they took that. But the dub, like, found a way to really just hit that line. Like, the interactions that Terrell was talking about with Misty and Brock... Um, or Ash and uh, Misty, or Brock and Misty, like, they found ways to juggle around their dialogue enough to the point where it made you want to be invested in these people. They felt less like just characters and more like friends or people you would know that would be in this situation. Like, for example, I know there's one where um, uh, they're outside looking in at the biodome and Brock is like going gaga over this lady. And he's like, I've never seen a woman so beautiful before. And Misty goes, look right behind you. And Ash is like, only one of us can hallucinate at a time, Misty. Like that dynamic alone. You remember that because of how they are. And I've even praised the, the Ghost of Maiden's Peak episode. Just some throwaway filler episode that typically means nothing. To be the funniest episode in Pokemon. to Like one of the funniest episodes in Pokemon to date. And it also hits home in the emotional aspect. Like... When, when they do the sad stuff or the very intense stuff because you got the chance to laugh with these characters already. So when you get to an episode where Ash almost fucking dies in the snow and all his Pokemon are hugging him, you feel that because you were there through the good and the bad. Like, honestly, emotionally, to this day, I still think this is the hardest, like, hitting series. Emotion, when it comes to, like, raw emotions. Uh, that's not to say other series don't do emotions well. Other series have tackled emotions very well when they need to. But OG feels like it can hit whatever emotion it needs to at the time. And it never feels uncomfortable. Or it never feels like it has to be, oh, like, this is has, this is the sad episode. Don't worry, guys. You're gonna get sad. Trust me. Whenever a sad thing happens, it it always felt like it came with the moment. And it also is equated to the time period in which it took... Where, uh, like Lord Michael says, it, it held no punches. It, um, it could afford to do the crazy stuff. Like, for example, obviously we got some, there's some episodes that kind of cross the line in America. Like, for example, the, the beach one where James makes his fucking fake titties blow up. Obviously that couldn't be in America. James but, is a bad bitch, man. But there's other episodes that still wind up crossing that line. Like when Misty, uh, well, not even Misty, when James, Brock, and Meowth almost drown. So when they finally reach the surface and like they they end up breathing, Pikachu snaps like, damn, they didn't die. I'm pretty sure that episode can't exist anymore. Like, I'm pretty sure. And Brock, even as he is like a lot of people loved Brock's like silly little. Ah, he's he's going gaga over all these women. Nowadays, that would obviously be labeled as harassment. Like, Brock would literally be, like, the subjugation of harassment. And then another part of the community we would tackle that and be like, you're only going after Brock because he's horny and uh, he's not of white descent or some shit. They'll say something stupid, and then Twitter will have a whole argument about it. Like, thank God OG didn't happen during Twitter. Let's just say that. Or, like, in Pokemon Shipwreck, where literally they hold the funeral for Ash, Brock, and Misty because it's thought that they died. That's that's something you can't you can't replicate that anymore. But yeah, uh, OG's best um best trait just to sum it up is that it came from a place of realism. It, it to me this feels like the realest Pokemon series out of all of them. It comes from the realism of the moment. That does translate to some weird shit later that we'll get into, but for now this is this feels like the most real Pokemon can get. So yeah. Oh okay. For some reason, it felt like you still had more to say in that part. Yeah, I could, yeah, I could, yeah, I can tell you. Yeah, that. I was just saying. So, so yeah. So that's pretty much how I, I sum it up. All right. Understandable. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, but uh, KG, go ahead. <clears throat> yeah. So, for me personally, 
OS, uh, specifically with Kanto, I 100% agree with Tyrone and Terrell with their uh, statements that they brought up earlier. You know, promotion is such a key thing for giving us the ability to go and, you know, become a part of it. You don't want to be, you don't want to be missing out on what they're promoting to be the biggest thing of that generation, you know. And uh, uh, from all the merchandise to the movies to the cards, oh my god, the cards back in the day, bro. I think that was when everybody started to really start getting into the whole, um, you know, like, I got something special for you, stranger. And then he pulls out his jacket and his bunch of Pokemon cards in there <laughs> from, like, kindergarten oh, days. Oh, God, yeah, that. Th those were the good days. But um, to me, uh, with the anime specifically, I adore the characters in this series, bro. And it, it also has to correlate with the dub. I know I've seen the original series. I've seen some of the jokes that are different from what was initially made to what we got here in the west uh, obviously for example there was like that uh joke about tea or something and then they converted it to like uh grape juice or or coffee or yeah something yeah like. yeah yeah a lot of the jokes don't translate well sometimes yeah or they just straight up edit it to have that image you know uh so but still regardless like they do it because they want to make sure that these jokes hit and they do and i agree with tyron 100 percent. these are jokes that will not pass in this time we are mm -hmm. now in this era where things are a little bit more tighter than ever before so a lot of jokes specifically with the pokemon anime and and the franchise as a whole and how big it's gotten uh, the liberties that they've had before is now super restrictive. Pokemon is going to make sure you follow uh, their routine and not go out of bounds in that part. So, yeah, the OS series, if I had to give it a praise, it's the characters and the writing, specifically with the dub. It is honestly my favorite uh, when it comes to the comedy and the dub side of things because they really took a lot of chances, a lot of uh, risks and, and included with that. Uh, and that carried on from OS and even into a little bit of Orange Islands. I think it's Johto when it started to slowly go down a little bit. Uh, but it still carried on throughout the years and I appreciate it for it. In fact, you know, uh, I'm pretty confident and I could say this that there are a lot of jokes I probably missed that I didn't get at first when I was young that I'll probably laugh out loud if I watch it now again in this Too bad, I can quote them like even the one where I can say this whole skit, and I know for fact this would never last. Uh, it's the one where it's School of Hard Knocks, where the boy shows the picture of the of the last the 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 girl who is top scorer in the school, and uh, and Misty goes, "It's a woman," and Brock goes, "She sure is," and Ash goes, "She can violate my rights." That joke has no chance in this timeline. No, no. not one single pit. <laughs> Yeah, just fell. Or, or like when Missy goes, wait a minute. If you don't like the way she treats you, then why do you let her? Or why do you have a picture of her? I hate the way she treats me, but I like the way she looks. Not like other girls that treat you bad and look good, uh, look bad too. And Missy punches them. That shit is so disrespectful. That joke has no chance. Not a chance. It's misogynistic. It's sexist. It's it. It has so many like red flags around it, it it would die before it even showed but, but up on but here's the question taro is it funny oh it's fucking hilarious yes it's fucking hilarious it's hilarious as hell but this censor culture we've been in and kg i'm gonna go back to you sorry i'm, I'm sorry for taking your spot. oh no no no, no. I, I finished pretty much what i had yeah. to say so don't it's this censorship culture that we're in that that prohibits these type of uh, of things from happening so when you, you when you look at it through that lens you appreciate it in the moment especially now because you know that these jokes could never happen but yeah that's that from that that the whole thing and the, the fact that i was able to quote it means that i valued it enough to the point where i felt like it was it was a good joke but obviously the general public isn't gonna think that not nowadays No, 100% though, like, yeah, yeah, a lot of jokes back then will not relate now, it, it, it's just impossible. 
but at yeah. the same time i feel like they did work around that at least in, and also you have to give yeah. props to the writer as well who worked on it at the time because he he went well, above and beyond in ridiculous ways can i ask it. you to this can i ask both of you guys this sure do you think it's wrong for these jokes to be like in cancel culture in this time and day do you think it's bad that these jokes are going to be censored if they were to ever exist in this day and age do you think comedy should be silenced for the sake of time period I think no. it's more so comedy has changed over years, so comedy from back then uh, will evolve as well, and therefore the comedy of okay. now will evolve. All be right, well, let me, let, 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 me, let me. Go ahead, go ahead Terrell. Let me counter that question with another question. Mm -hmm. Do you, just like these old jokes would be considered problematic because of its sexism and homophobia and all that other stuff, do you think those old. Bugs Bunny cartoons that keep people in blackface. You think those uh, deserve to be pretty much wiped from the world and, and never shown again? For the, sake of his, for the sake of history, I don't think they need to be wiped from the world. But for those, I obviously see why like they would trigger some people. And the older it gets, I think the the worse it gets. I think there does need to be boundaries. I think there also needs to be like I think they do disclosures like on Disney Plus and shit like that where they do disclosures. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do disclosures, but I don't think they need to be wiped. Every like jokes. Yeah, explained. There we go. Not wiped, but explained. And like like when you do that to a joke, you're in a race it. You're pretty much like you're entertaining the idea that if something isn't right or appeals to a specific person based on standard, then it needs to not exist, and that's wrong because. If comedy was based on what other people like and dislike, there would be no comedy. Period. Because comedy's not meant to appeal to everybody. It's subjective. The reason why I use the, the cartoons, for example, for those in the chat wondering, is because the cartoons still have general physical and like comedic humor mm -hmm. besides the character looking a certain way. Yeah. So it's not like the comedy's all racially motivated. Most of the comedy is, is based around like there's there's one where they do the Elmer Fudd thing, but they don't use Elmer Fudd, they use a blackface guy. Right. But it's it's still the same gags of him being tricked of bugs dressing in a woman outfit or mm. doing that thing where you climb through the law, you run out the other end and then you spin it. So he's mm. like in a constant loop and shit. Mm. Is is that concept. All those are physical gags. Those gags are still funny. The problem with the cartoon has nothing to do with the physical gags of the show. It's just the visual of that one character or two characters looking yeah. offensive. It may be like one or two couples offensive jokes. I know KG brought this up one time, but it also leads to uh, what I call confused uh, representation. People like characters like uh, Speedy Gonzalez, but because the West believes that Speedy Gonzalez is offensive to uh, Mexican culture, they tried to wipe him out. But the moment they did that, Mex uh, a lot of people uh, of Mexican descent or Spanish descent, they got mad at him for being censored out because it's like, no, we want representation. Well, he's misrepresenting you all. No, the people that are representing that spot say, no, don't take him out because we want him to represent us. But he's offensive to y'all. You can't tell us that he's offensive to us because we're not offended. You see the problem? Yes. Yeah, like they want representation, but they hate representation. They want a certain type of representation. Representation, exactly. And they assume that's what you want. Right, exactly. So it's like, I'm just trying to give you what you want, Tyrone. You don't like it? But it's not what I wanted. I said but, what I wanted. <laughs> but what you want is offensive. It's offensive. Right, but it's Tyrone? not. But it really oh, no, no, is. No no, 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 no. The thing is, but Tyrone, it's offensive. Right? Right? Yeah, nah, 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 sure, buddy. Mm -hmm. So, we, so we, can, we can remove it then, right? Right. I wasn't a proper fan enough and the weird kid. Oh, okay. They're just. Well, I was reading the chat. Sorry. But uh, yeah, uh, too many... White people believe Speedy Gonzalez is racist, but they don't know what Mexico wants. Yeah, pretty much. The only one to punish reps uh, the kiss people asses instead of uh, being fun for real. So yeah, I mean, and just to wind it back to Pokemon, just the OG series. Uh, some of the jokes aren't even dialogue jokes. Some of them are physical, like 
slapstick, especially with this fucking group. God, if you look back at OG, they beat the fuck out of each other. Yeah. Like, god damn it. That's because Ash, physical violence. Ash never, Ash never hits anybody, but Brock and Misty beat Ash's ass, yo. Or they'll beat each other's asses. Yeah. Like, Ash yeah. will say something funny, Misty will kick him in the fucking head, Brock will say something weird, and then he'll he'll get beat up. Misty beat them up primarily. Misty punched the shit out of Brock and Ash a lot. Well, people like think, Misty, though. I think she winded it. I think she, it started winding down once she got Toga Pig. Yeah, once you become a mother, you can't, like, do physical abuse as much. Also, because oh, she still cool. she still did it. She still did it, but it wasn't as bad. But before Togepi, I, Misty pounded the fuck out of Ash. I remember there's an episode where uh, Misty has a bathing exactly. suit. Yeah, Misty has a bathing suit on, and they're all in the beach, and Ash goes, wow, Misty, you look like a girl. And Misty just fucking chucks this ball and creams Ash. All she wanted was a compliment, Ash. And you couldn't shut your fucking mouth and give it to her. Even in Johto, they still kind of did it. Missy couldn't uh, keep her hands to herself. Yeah, I said it went down. I didn't say it went away. She she, uh, she just had to get herself a little beast. Brock did punch Missy once. Him. I remember that. The reason Brock punched Missy was because Missy kept calling Brock out on liking the, the one girl that was in charge of the pavilion. Yeah, they oh, wouldn't let. They, they, we still follow the rule of not hitting girls. The only girls who could hit girls are girls. So, like, if it was another girl, they would smack the girl, but that's it. Yeah, but like, Brock, uh, Brock actually hit Misty for calling him out on liking the girl. That but it was, was uh, a, I'm saying is it was, it was a rare occurrence because. Yeah, yeah, he bopped her on the head. Which, again, like I said, these, these, uh, <laughs> these, these characters, like them or hate them, their relationship is real. It's, it's, it's real people. But uh, do we need to transition into the negatives considering we still have two other yeah. regions we need to get into before we uh, cap off? I um, don't have anything else to contribute yeah. to that part of yeah. the conversation anymore. Anyway. Yeah, and just to, to follow up just with plot-wise, like, Brock and Misty, um, even in like certain episodes, they would do it. Where Ash would like talk about his progress as a trainer, and Brock and Misty would literally call him out. They'd be like, Ash is like, I'm doing great as a trainer. Actually, you fucking suck. <laughs> like, like the episode with uh, the lighthouse. The lighthouse is such a random fucking episode. Like from start to finish, they they talk like they basically the episode starts off with them like summarizing Ash's journey up to this point. Ash is like, yeah, I got two badges, and Misty and Brock are like, we gave you those, dude. Chill out. And he's like, damn, okay, why you have to do that? He's like, well, I caught a bunch of Pokemon. And they're like, you caught six. Most trainers have like fucking thirty at this point, dude. Like, it's real, but it's real. They at least stick around. They're not mean. Well, they're mean about it, but they're they're friends about it. They're telling them the reality. They're giving them a, an honest truth. It's like fact checking. Yeah, they're, they're not letting him get so far in his head that he believes he's the shit. So they're bringing him back down to reality. So I, I, I do like that, though, because it means they're like, like Terrell's always said, they're spiting him, but it's real. So that that's a thing I like. That's personally another pro just to tack on before we get to the cons. That's fine, because KJ, you're starting the cons off, buddy. Oh uh -oh. no, why is I starting cons off? Because you haven't talked for a while. Oh also, also, also is the, I always because it, it, it it's more interesting coming from the guy who's mostly positive. Okay, yeah. that's understandable, sir. Have a nice day. Uh no, but like in all sincerity, if I had to talk about the cons of the series, um for Kanto specifically <laughs> Yeah, it fucking sucks, bro. I hate this series so much. Nah. Oh, go ahead. Uh, the thing is, it aged, I think, is the issue. And that's because it's the first series. Mm -hmm. So the first series, and this is always going to be a criticism that any generation of storytelling is going to go through. Mm -hmm. uh, normally, the first series always tends to be like the setting grounds. And then every other, subs you know, every other generation would like enhance and improve upon what they've made mistakes on in the previous one you know to refine it and improve upon it uh os is like that for me um they took a lot of liberties and unfortunately they went more outside of the pokemon games style like there wasn't really any pokemon battling per se because you know most of it was like oh rescue this pokemon or Oh, ignite the water and then electrocute the, the rock or, oh, you saved us. Okay, here, have a badge. You know what I mean? Like, in terms of that, when it comes to, like, a Pokemon trainer experience, Ash never really 
did much of it aside from maybe one or two occasions. And I think that's the weakest point about it. While sure the comedy and the writing in the dub, you know, does a good job, it doesn't help when it comes to a Pokemon trainer's perspective of like storytelling. You, you don't get the Pokemon experience from a battler's point of view. You only get a uh, a slice of life comedy style series. And uh, because of that, I feel we were robbed of what could have been a w interesting storytelling. Like we didn't get a chance to see Giovanni get introduced or Team Rocket subplots or stuff like that, that we experienced in the games. And they never really touch upon this until the next generation with uh, uh, Johto a little bit anyway. So yeah, that, that's just my biggest criticism with it. It's just that while I do appreciate what we did get, I am still kind of disappointed by what we could have gotten from this series. Because I think, depending on how they established this uh, storytelling in OS, this could have made things more wonderful when they brought them back in uh, in Best Wishes. You know, the whole confrontation with Ash and Giovanni was such a monumental deal at the time. But I think it would have enhanced it even more had there been build up in this series or had there been storytelling to go in that route in this series so that's my biggest criticism with it is like i love the the writing of the dub i just am disappointed that the writing from the games did not transition at all into the anime series so that, that's just my my overall perspective on it uh animation also if i have to quickly go into it given it's also one of the original series and the starting points it was very stiff i mean the whole point of them like standing like in models with their arms like too tight to their stomachs and everything you know but that's just something the original series had to go through every series that followed up did improve upon the animation of the characters movements and whatnot but like you could definitely tell that it was stiff uh in the original series but that, that that's pretty much all i gotta say on that part it's those two but uh, let's pass it on to the next person, why don't we? So I would normally let Tyrone go next, but knowing how Tyrone usually goes in the stuff, we'll end up commenting in the middle of his anyway. So I'm gonna let him go last. Okay. Uh, if we're gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna bring up every issue because I know Tyrone has his own issues. The two things I'll focus on when it comes to uh, OS's issues is the first problem is it goes back to the chaotic thing I mentioned. Okay. Chaos allowed os to stick out immensely because it literally threw everything at the kitchen sink with you the problem with that is it pretty much traded any sense of consistency for the sake of being entertainment which is why you got these weird ass battles we got this weird ass store we got things that sometimes were brought up and never referenced again why gary drives a car at the age of 10 why for some reason he has 10 fucking badges or whatever the fuck why in some episodes characters will look insanely off bottle and no one brings it up but in other episodes it'd be brought up like it's a fourth wall break journeys literally i mean uh os literally has a little bit of everything in it and it makes it a funny show like literally you can watch any episode of os and be entertained by it but it doesn't work for a cohesive show and that's why people they like they would make jokes about how ash didn't gain any gym battles but like that doesn't make just because you reference the problem doesn't make the problem any less existent so literally ash would just have a bunch of his gym matches given to him his badges through really no real effort like i can't i think only surge surge might be the only one he genuinely wins surge and koga are the only two gym battles i think ash actually beats the gym leaders yeah and it's like through his i'm own... not counting team rocket and fucking the eight gym that's then I'm not counting Blaine. Beating Team Rocket is a Saturday morning thing. That's, that's yeah, and I think the show wanted, and I'm I'm glad the show kind of punished them in the way it did. Oh, uh, Ryan Sword, I'm not counting Blaine. Want to know why Ash didn't beat Magmar? Charizard. Charizard beat Magmar. beat Magmar. Yeah, yeah, agree. Uh, so the, my first issue was that its chaotic nature led to very inconsistent storytelling and uh, actually storytelling and even beats in the story. It just it doesn't work because it's trying everything the second problem it has <laughs> and i think ron's what even brings it up in the chat ash's og team is iconic but they're not developed like at all actually not really i think his team is more iconic because they're, they're, they're charming but they're not in-depth 
Exactly. And it's mainly they mainly get the they mainly get a lot of praise and passes because they're first, not because they're because like when you go back and look at it, none of those mods really get a lot of extra episodes outside of their like introduction and then being used in fights or Team Rocket situations. Even Charmander, who gets the most development, is very inconsistent. I think his evolution to a Charmeleon was fine. And then the writers were like, well, it'd be more interesting to have him be a disobedient Char Charmeleon and Charizard than to have him pay it. Like, it's almost like because they know Ash sucks, they would they would play around with things to make sure Ash would never get too far ahead in his own show for some weird ass reason. So I felt like Charizard was almost a way of undercutting him, especially since Pikachu was always on his side. But Pikachu was already cute and marketable and weak enough that you could still have Pikachu lose and it makes sense. You can't have Charizard be in that same boat. Which I think is what started the whole not evolving all the starters thing. So I'll, I'll leave it at that because I know Tyrone's probably going to get into other things and I don't want to take every single thing. But I'll leave it at that. The inconsistency I mean, with his team and the inconsistency with the writing. I will say what you said actually uh, weaves perfectly into what I was going to say is the characters. While I love the way they interact, development-wise, they are stale. They are stale. When they're in the area talking to each other, perfect. When they're in the scene, it's great. The problem is, is that Brock, Misty specifically, and even by extension Ash's Pokemon, they all serve a role, but that's it. They, We never really get anything wiggling that until like far after the fact when Misty and Brock basically leave or almost are about to leave Brock and Misty sadly are I'm the adult figurine that that watches over Ash and Misty because this show would be kind of weird if it was just them two and Misty is I'm the girl that is their entire role in this series if it's not Ash sadly is the only real character in this series that gets any real development, and that's only chalked up to the fact that this is his first region. So everything he's experiencing, we're experiencing for the first time. If this was a, uh, a series about some other trainer that we saw first, and then Ash's Pokemon journey came after, Ash would be the blandest character because we've, we've been here, we've done that, we sung this dance already. It's just, but unfortunately, a lot of these characters mostly just serve one purpose and that's about it even looking back at like the first pokemon movie what did they do in it brock and misty are in the movie that's it they don't do shit they're just in the movie and hell ash barely qualifies the only reason he's important is because he did the one thing the other trainers didn't do fucking run into a suicide fight between mewtwo and mew stop it yeah he basically becomes the referee that gets turned into stone. Like, that, like and all important is these characters, while they're great when it comes to them can, like talking to each other, they are not good when it comes to the in-depthness of them. And, I, and you can chalk that up to this is the first series and, you know, we don't know what to do with them yet. But later series find ways to work with these characters a lot better. This series, unfortunately... Mostly serves as Brock and Misty being exposition, uh, ex, expositional pieces for Ash. What's happening? This is happening, Ash. This happens every time because it needs to. I didn't know that. Yeah, well, now you do, Ash. You should do a thing that relates to it. Ash, why don't you use your this? Oh, why should I use this? Because that does this. That's every episode of Pokemon. I'm sorry. Like, that is the formula. Like that is back then that was the formula. It was kind of interesting because they'd be like, oh, Brock and Missy are Ash's coaches when Pokemon League, which I find it weird that a trainer needs a coach. That's like saying you have a trainer for a trainer. What? <laughs> that's da, weird. Da, da. Yeah, that, that's fucking weird. Da, da. And no other no other trainers had this. There was never like a trainer traveling that had like a background person telling them what to do. It's just this. It's weird. It's fun that the announcer points it out, but it still doesn't make it any less weird. Um, yeah, I gotta say, like, while these characters are fun in the moment, in depth, they're not. They they are they they're are hollow. they're hollow. Yeah, they they are 
They are nothing more than pieces to the recommended episode qu uh, quota. Um, and it's, it's the reason why I say you could turn on any episode of, of OS and be entertained by it. Yeah. But when you start looking at the ongoing narrative, you go, fuck, nothing happens in, in Kanto. Like, I feel like the only reason they gave uh, Misty Togepi was to give her something else to do. Yeah. Because originally Ash was supposed to have Togepi. It was his egg. Yeah. But I think they were like, okay, we're done giving Ash Pokemon. Let's give Misty a Pokemon. Because we need her to be a mother. And also, this thing is cute and sells fucking gold and silver before gold and silver comes out. Like, that's that's essentially all what she does, sadly. And that's that's it. That, that sadly is it. Like, it, it is... They are grasping for straws at, at narratives at that point. And again, you can chalk it up to being the first series, but again, how many times can you give it that uh, excuse before you? Well, no, it, it is an excuse, but it doesn't make in the writing feel any better. Yeah, like definitely. if you the way that's why most people who talk about OS always say OS is funny as fuck. Like, yeah, it is. But what about that narrative though? Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. You think yeah, it, it's, there. it is. Yeah. It is amazingly inconsistent too. There's so many trainers that Ash goes. Let's meet again in the Pokemon League that we never see again. No, I mean, that can be said for a lot of characters. So. Well, yeah, but but it's it. It's oh, it's happens they, way more often. It, yeah, he says it way their, too often. Yeah, it's here where they start their bad habits. Yeah, and it's granted, not a starting point. I, I, I'll give Johto some credit. Johto kind of fixes some of those yeah. issues. For yeah, that's what I said before. I think yeah, there are certain for, things that I feel the following series tends to. Terrell says it. Terrell said it. Uh, but better before me. This is where the story starts getting a lot of its bad habits. Whenever you talk to a community or have a debate about somebody about Pokemon and its weirdness. People always refer to this as their reference point of, well, what about the, back then in Pokemon when they did this? Rhyhorn got shocked by thunder. It's an anime. Yeah, they did that because it's convenient. Yeah. And there's no rules attached to it. They now, care more the about rules. the entertainment of the episode than they did about the mechanics of the games. Right. Never mind the fact that Pikachu can fucking use Thunderbolt on Golem and knock it out in movie one. Because no one was going to pay attention to that at the time. Now people are going to pay attention to it. But OG's always the start of that bad habit shit that people let flow on. Some people recognize this as, oh, it's just the original series. Let's not pay attention to it. But others will use this literally as their defining reference to an argument. And it all starts here. Well, that and, and it kind of goes into the writing situation where, like, how we'll talk about how, how well, how funny... OS is, but like how later gens had to tone it down because of political correctness. Right. So some episodes that are absolutely hilarious, or some episodes that even have like a bunch of side gags that are hilarious. Mm -hmm. Like uh like the the uh, I forget what it's called, but the episode where he dies, he's hanging out with Gengar and Haunter and Ghastly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's what led to every fucking region getting a ghost house episode. And the only one that really sticks out in recent memory, I think is the Esper one. Granted, X and Y has two ghosts. Oh, Christ sakes, I would say X and Y had two. I don't think they needed to. I think the Esper one was fine, but I think the Esper one is better because the Esper one. In the order, it is. In the order, why the Esper one sticks out is because it's one. It's it's refreshingly dark. Oh Lord, yeah. fun fact: because of nine eleven, they couldn't call that episode the Tower of Terror for a bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh so no, like, the episode the episode got delayed because of that. That's why. Gotcha. So really? that, like that's that's the oh, no, no 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 sorry 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 let me get this right again it wasn't delayed it came out before 9 11 but because of that we they, they wouldn't re-air it they couldn't re-air that episode for a while isn't that the tentacruel episode one yes oh, because no. tentacruel knocks over one of the buildings yeah he's all giant and shit yes, I've only, yeah i think i've only seen that episode once because of it yeah so like that but yeah that fucking yeah uh the esper one only sticks out because of how yeah. refreshingly dark it is whereas the rest of them are like really casually like they're spooky but that's about it or it's like yeah. well this ghost is misunderstood and shit it was like well i'm misunderstood but you know the lady's dead and you're like oh 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 and they uh -huh. do it in a i'll give back to why credit it does it in a subtle way that that makes it stick out yeah because of its darkness that's and that kind of goes into tyrone's whole bad habits thing there are a lot of episode tropes that, that you get from os 
But the problem is the direction they go with them in oh in like later series is like lighter and lighter as it goes on. Yeah. So I even another. Oh, go ahead. Well, I, I'll use. Well, I was going to use the other example of uh, the the Pokemon getting separated from their trainers. <laughs> That's used in every region. I think every region does that. But I think OS is the only region that give them like subtitles that you understand what they're saying. Yeah, and like they have the Ekings and Coffin. I say the standout only because Ekings and Coffins go into the philosophy of how Pokemon do things based on their trainers. Ekings and Coffins say this phrase, we're not bad. Jesse and James are bad. We just follow whatever they say. I mean, obviously, they get a little bit more in depth. I'm saying an abridged version, but... But it's... They it's, 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 say, it's the only reason we do shit is because our trainers are bad. Well, that and to me, that's interesting versus, like, later regions that would do shit like, well, I'm just lost. Oh, well, we'll have one Pokemon be the one that doesn't give a fuck about getting back reunited and intentionally fucks up a situation. For Gen 5, be Oshawa, Chespin... Fucking uh, Baneri is kind of like that in Gen 4 because it's only concerned about Pikachu. Yeah. And the episodes usually just revolve around them getting separated. Even the episodes where the crew themselves get separated in the groups. You know, the episodes where like Ash ends up with James and Brock ends up with Jesse and May. Well, actually, no. Jesse usually ends up with the girl of that region. They always do that part. And Brock gets stuck with like Meowth or some shit. Or they'll flip it where Brock is with James and Ash is with Meowth. That's a running thing from Gen 1. Gen 1 starts that trope, and then they continue it. It happens in Hoenn. It happens in Down to Pro. Hell, it even happened in Journeys. I think it's with the Durant episode. The Durant episode is what does it. Because I remember, because I complained about how poorly used the Durant and Heatran uh, uh, duo or rivalry. Uh, a lot of Pokemon's main gimmicks come from OS. And... They get worse and worse because of the restrictions in writing in terms of how they want to portray these things. But I don't want to go too... I feel like we've, I've gone too far off on that tangent. Um, I guess I can go into another con than that I had. And this, ahead. obviously, you know that I'm going to have this con just based on what my favorite series is in Pokemon. Um, the battles. OG's battles. This ain't the place. This ain't it. This ain't it. If you're looking for Pokemon battles, this is not it. A Pokemon battle in OG can pretty much consist of whatever is the funniest thing to happen to a Pokemon or the most nonsensical thing that can happen just so long as it happened. Uh, I remember uh, Ash lost a fight technically. He didn't lose the fight because it never got to finish, but he's losing the fight to Erica. He He's losing a fight to Erica essentially because... She uses Gloom, and Gloom's smell is so bad that Charmander and Bulbasaur just cop out of the fight. Like, they don't even want to deal with it. And Ash is losing the fight because of that. That's why he's losing the fight. Thankfully, the gym fucking catches on fire, and Ash saves the damn thing. But, uh, that's how he wins the badge. But that's the reason the fault. The whole fight is that. They're lo they lose the fight. It counts as a KO because they can't stand the smell. Or like in the Pokemon League, when Squirtle falls asleep because of sleep powder, or Charizard just doesn't want to deal with it anymore, so he just falls asleep and stops the fight. And that's an official loss for Ash. And Team Rocket, I don't even want to get into them because they're so repetitive, almost to the point where it starts to even hurt the League. Ash does almost gets um, disqualified because Team Rocket holds him up twice in one episode. Yeah. They hold him up twice, which, ooh, like KG said earlier, does not age well. It ages horribly. If you go back to watch that episode with Richie and Ash, I mean, not with Richie and Ash, with Ash getting to Richie's fight, it is painful to watch. Because this man gets held up by Team Rocket on two occasions. I think three, actually. He gets held up because uh, Jesse fakes Richie's voice. Uh, he gets kidnapped. Then he leaves, and then when he's headed off to the street, they chase him again. It like, god damn it, it's a, ooh. It, 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 it is, it's so the fight only lasts like, what, five minutes? And it's not a good fight at all. It's, it's a terrible looking fight. It's a bad fight. And most of the fights are like this. A fight can pretty much range from, um, if Pikachu's able to get a good Thunderbolt off on the opponent, it won. 
if uh, Charizard can blast fire flamethrower at a at a Pokemon and somehow hit the trainer to the point where the trainer has like the singe on their face, you know, the black singe on their face, and they cough the up some smoke and fall. Yeah, and they cough up some smoke and fall. Ash officially won that yeah. fight. That whole damn fight. Yeah. All of it. Yeah, that shit. Ash won the fight. Doesn't matter if they still had Pokemon left or whatever. He won the fight. One of the one of the one fights that winds up looking like it's about to be a good fight is Butterfree versus Raticate, where Butterfree hits Raticate with paralyzation. The guy just sort of picks Raticate up and goes, "Let's call it a draw." I'm like, "No, motherfucker, you're getting your ass whooped." What? Because Bell, Bellsprout wasn't playing. Oh, that too. Oh, uh, that one. Gag fights. I was gonna say the Pokemon League is full of these gag fights where. Um, in Ash's first fight, oh, he uses he uses Krabby because his other two Pokemon got knocked out. And the joke behind this is supposed to be the weak Pokemon that Ash has neglected all this point is going to be the thing that flips the fight around. The It's basically a big things come in small packages joke. I disagree, though. I never viewed the Krabby fight as a gag fight, personally, though. Well, yeah, but, well, they do the joke technically twice because the, the next episode after, Ash fights the Grass Lady. But this time, they do it on her favor. Which is Bellsprout. Where, oh, she's got a Scyther and a Beedrill that wind up losing fights. Big, strong Pokemon. Who's her strongest mind? Fucking Bellsprout. Yeah, that, that was one was like, 100%. That was entirely intentional. Well, because it's weird. Because the, the idea is supposed to be that it's weird. It's supposed to be like, oh, you can use any Pokemon for any situation just so long as you know how it works. Which is fine. It's creative as fuck and it's funny. But it doesn't make for a serious fight, because now you've got Bulbasaur beating the shit out of Pikachu and, uh... Now you have Bellsprout beating the shit out of Bulbasaur and Pikachu. And then you had, like, legit fights, like the... I forget the second person, the one that has the Arcanine and the Cloister and shit, and literally, all fucking... And he goes, Crab Hammer Cloister, and he's like... I forget, I don't know if it's Iron Defense, but he's like, Harden or some shit. And he's like, withdraw, keep on... Withdraw. And he's like, oh yeah, withdraw, and he's like, keep on hammer. He's like, Cookie! 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 Cookie, and all of a sudden you hear the crack, and his motherfucker goes, oh, like he fucking yeah. lost. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and once the crack happens, which, what was the strategy going to be outside of that? Nothing, it was, I'm, I'm beat it till I meet it. No, I'm talking, I'm talking about the other trainer. Was your plan just to stay in the shell the whole time? What, like, what, 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 what's going on here? That's, that's episode two or three, Ash, that's what that is. That was like, the heart, that was the great Harden battle without the other agreement. Yeah, that that too but obviously that's the joke it's a gag fight like all of most of these are just gag fights which is funny it's it's definitely something you have to erase your brain about uh but if you want to if you want battles which this series is weirdly hyping up this ain't it ash's yeah. goal is to like be a pokemon master so he always wants to battle all these trainers so you're thinking oh how's the battle gonna be oh okay Hell, he doesn't okay. even, most of the mons he catches, he doesn't even catch in the traditional way. Yeah. They're all like in this weird, we let's be friends way, with a few exceptions, and then a few in a couple of weird ways, like him catching Krabby, where he just, ch ch Krabby chops up a stick, ha! You're mine now, bitch! Or fucking uh, Manky, uh, Primate, where it's like, I'm gonna chase you for a while, and then I'm gonna let you piss off Charmander so he can learn Rage. And then it's like, yeah, okay. Throw the ball, hurry! Ah, he's mine now. Like I, there's no kid. That's the it, to boil down. OS's main problem in it in its entirety, it lacks consistency because it doesn't have a focus because it doesn't have a direction because this was the first series we got. And so it's it's under we understand those problems and why it ended up the way that it did, but it doesn't make the show any better 10, 15, 20, 25 years down the line.